the nice thing about having a buddy like Kiwi is that like we cover the spectrum, like both ends of it. Like look at him, he's all clean shaven and stuff, and I'm like totally in the Anderthal and all. He's a master fabricator, body man, painter. I'm, you know, a mechanic. I'm a mechanic and a tuner, right? And so like we bounce things off of each other. I let him know when I'm having an issue with, you know, body work that I'm doing and he'll let me know that I'm a buffoon and that I should be delivering sandwiches for Jimmy John's. And then when he has a tune-up problem or something like that, I'll say, okay. And I, I take it all into consideration and I, I make suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the perfect example of it. And this is also why I have this thing against aftermarket parts when they're not necessary, right? There are some points, some, some things you have to use an aftermarket part, but when you're dealing with common, regular, you know, systems, it's not, you know, it's not a race car, it's not a specialized thing, it's just something to go down the road, aftermarket parts will bite you in the ass almost every time. And especially today in the age of like cheapness. So, explain what happened with this car. Right, well, uh, just over about 14 months ago, we put a new distributor in it, uh, a new you know, electronic complete distributor. That's this That's one over this here. one here, yep, the whole so, thing. Here, not, come closer. Not just the internals. Right, it's the, a Petronics hybrid distributor. They use a, a, a Chevy points style, a GM points style distributor instead of a Ford distributor mated to a Ford thing. So right off the bat, it's a hybrid deal. It like, it shouldn't exist. It's an aberration against nature, if you ask me. But that's besides the point. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, I'm, a, I'm quite a fan of them because it just does away with the points and condenser. Well, Petronix yeah. unit, but the fact that this is a Chevy points-style yeah. distributor yeah. mated to a Ford is the... Well, it's a little... I guess it's just um, volume. You know, they, just, they right. can get so many of those at the right price. Cheapness. Cheapness, yeah. Yes. Um, but the customer came back and he was having a problem with it. He described it as surging, um, and that was certainly a mild way of putting it. As you rolled the throttle up off a little bit above idle, it was like someone was turning the key on and off. It would run for one second, cut off for one second, run again, cut off. Not just surge and a little bit of power, like losing 20 or 30%, but just like someone just turned it off. Okay. So chased my tail a little bit with the carburation, thinking we were having some kind of a progression issue, you know, from the idle circuit up to the mains. Um, Tony gave me an idea and that kind of ruled out the carburetor so we kept looking and threw a timing light on it to make sure that uh, the timing hadn't moved, something funky had gone on and uh, pulled the vacuum line off to set the timing and the problem seemed to go away. Uh, it's like that's odd, um, set, reset the timing, it was pretty close, reconnected the vacuum line and immediately the problem was back again. And really what it comes down to is we've got some kind of an issue down inside here um, that as soon as the vacuum advance kicks in, it's killing the power. And so I, let, me, let, me, let me go a little step further. Now, as he's describing sure. his problem to me over the phone, I knew it wasn't carburetor based on, on, the, on the, the general diagnosis or the general description. I knew it had to have something to do with the ignition. And the fact that it was RPM sensitive and a vacuum advanced distributor told me that there's movement inside the distributor that's killing the ignition. So obviously had it all suck on the vacuum advanced hose and you watch. So that's as the engine is running and you would change the RPM. So make a long story short, as he's describing the problem to me over the phone, I recalled a factory defect uh, from the 1970s having to do with Oldsmobile distributors. I believe it was the Oldsmobile. It was one of the reverse rotation HEIs. Yeah, okay. Okay? So what happened was when they originally designed the HEI unit Chevrolet um, or General Motors, they did it with one rotation in mind. When they used it in different engines, they had reverse rotation. And because of reverse rotation, the vacuum pod would pull it in a different direction. So as long as that distributor, that original design HEI, was used in its original rotation, everything was fine. But when you applied it to an engine that had a different rotation of the distributor, obviously the engine's rotating the same way, but the distributor, depending on which side of the gear, the cam gear that it's on, will rotate one way or the other. So 
in its original design, rotation design, it was fine. But when you put it in a different engine with a different rotation, the wires would pull and work themselves, work themselves back and forth. And the little green wire that went from the module, right, would break, right? It would just snap off and it would give you exactly that where mm. if the car was sitting there idling, normal, um, it would run fine. As soon as you gave it gas, that contact would break and it would drop dead. So that's, as soon as you described to me what was going mm. on, I remember that. Right. And that's what you got here. So what we've, what we have, as you see, here's the two wires. And this is a typical Protronics unit. So the, while the distributor, the whole distributor is unique, this would be the same triggering device that you buy if you had, if you bought a kit to convert your points to Protronics. This is exactly the same module. But you can literally feel the cheapness in the wires. I mean, it's, it's typical Chinese bad insulation. You know, God only knows what condition the, the, the metal strands. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's cut one of these wires. You can, yeah. I'm going to cut this one right here. And let's strip this away. I don't, even if I, I don't even know if I can strip it with, without. Okay. So what we've got here is some place in this harness, these two wires, where it comes up into the distributor, there's an internal break in this wire right here. And so as soon as you give it gas, as soon as you change the RPM, and the vacuum advance pod moves, it breaks that connection inside the wire and kills the engine. It's that simple, really. It's that simple. It should, and it should take a little while to track it down. It was just such a weird... I hadn't come across that particular symptom before. Yeah, but, but I, I really... I, yeah, I, mean, I rapidly is, processed the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. You, you did. You did. But what really gave it away was when you had the timing light on it, every time it hit this dead spot, the timing light would go out, which means there's no spark coming down the wire. It's like, okay. It just fr gets frustrating after a while. Back to idle, the vacuum advance lets go, we've got a nice constant spark. By the way, I just got a nice dab off of these new Ford racing plug wires. That's because they knew you were a Mopar guy, so they were like, get away, get away. What do you mean the little girls in the Xingqiao province who put that together knew I was right? Yeah. So there you go. It's a. I think I says I don't like using aftermarket parts unless it's necessary, and the reason for that is because this is the kind of thing that you run across. The the engineering, the R and D that went into the original factory components, even forgetting about that that one defect that popped up on the HEIs, very early in their production, it's engineered to a higher standard. This stuff. Generally speaking, is is all formed out to the lowest bidder. They're using the cheapest wire. They're using the cheapest components they can get their hands on to mass produce it. And then you've got the fact that, and like I said, I, you know, it's not just I'm a purist. Why why is there a, literally a Chevy points distributor with an electronic conversion yeah. in a Ford engine? It's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's a Chevy cap, Chevy rotor button. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I can only put it down to volume, just sheer volume. Yeah. There's so much of that stuff available for Chevys, it's just the cheapest option that they've got. And it's not necessarily quality, but it's just volume. Right. It's volume. Now, this, volume. you put this in a year ago, and it's clean. I mean, it's like. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, how many miles could this thing have on it? I would say, to guess, probably five to 10,000. Five to 10,000, yeah. right? Tops? Tops. And, and you contacted Petronics about this? Yeah. And, Unfortunately, it's out of warranty, but they did say send it in, we'll have a look at it, 
Um, their intru- they haven't struck it before. I got hold of their tech helpline, right. and they haven't struck it before. Um, so they want to see it. They're interested to see what went on. Okay. Um, so hopefully that goes towards their quality control and R and D, and um, you know the customer may well get himself, you know, may get it fixed and sent back to him with a bit of luck. Mm, uh, not likely. Well, <laughs> let's hope for the best. Let's hope for the best. Let's hope yeah. for the best. Um, it just depends a little bit. I mean, some companies are very black and white. You know, if you've got a 90 day warranty, if you're on day 91, you're out of luck. Right. Um, other companies can be six months and they'll work with you. It just, it, um, it varies. Yeah. Well, it's just a, it's, it's, a, it's a diagnostic thing. I'm sure that you guys at some point are going to come across similar issues where it's an RPM related cutout or miss or anything like that. And that is one of the things you want to look at, especially if you've got a vacuum advanced style distributor. Because centrifugal advance never changes the position of the breaker, whether it's a, a point or electronic or Hall's effect. Mechanical advance never changes its position in the body, so the wires are never stressed. The vacuum advance is always moving the breaker plate. And so any any contact issues inside the wire, outside the wire, that's when it'll show up. So troubleshooting stuff. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Anything else going on? Um, no, nothing really. Well, a lot, but nothing new. Nothing new? Nothing new. You got any content coming? Yep, got content coming. It's all sitting there on the computer. I just got to kind of hit publish. Um, but yeah, I'm fighting off the flu and I'm fighting jet lag and I'm, yeah, it's, uh, but we're getting there. We're getting oh. there. Well, I'm going to go home and shave now because I feel like a, <laughs> a street urchin. But no one's going to recognize you if you shave. No, but I have a much better chance of getting hired as a driver at Jimmy John's if I do. <laughs> That's very true. See you tomorrow, guys. See you guys.